She had been tracking the buck for hours, following its hoof prints and droppings through the dense forest. She was determined to bring it down, not only for the meat and hide, but also for the thrill of the hunt. She loved the feeling of being one with nature, of matching her wits and skills against a wild animal. She finally spotted it, grazing near the edge of a river. It was a magnificent specimen, with a large rack of antlers and a sleek brown coat. She raised her rifle, took aim, and squeezed the trigger. But at the last moment, the buck sensed her presence and bolted, dodging the bullet by a hair's breadth. She cursed under her breath and quickly reloaded, hoping to get another shot. But before she could do so, she heard a low growl behind her. She turned around and saw a cougar, crouching on a rock, ready to pounce. It had been stalking her, waiting for the right moment to attack. She realized she had made a fatal mistake, she had become the hunted. She had no time to react. The cougar leaped from the rock, aiming for her throat. She barely managed to raise her rifle and fire, but the bullet missed the cougar and hit a tree. The cougar landed on her, knocking her to the ground. She felt its claws digging into her shoulder and its teeth biting into her neck. She screamed in pain and fear, struggling to free herself from its grip. She reached for her hunting knife, which was strapped to her belt. She grabbed it and stabbed the cougar in the side, hoping to hit a vital organ. The cougar roared and loosened its hold, giving her a chance to push it off. She scrambled to her feet, clutching her bleeding neck. She saw her horse, which had been tied to a nearby tree, neighing and stamping nervously. She ran towards it, hoping to mount it and escape. But the cougar was not done yet. It recovered from the stab wound and chased after her, determined to finish her off. It was faster than her, and it soon caught up with her. It leaped again, aiming for her back. She felt its weight on her, dragging her down. She thought she was going to die. But then, she heard a gunshot. She looked up and saw a man on a horse, holding a smoking rifle. He had shot the cougar in the head, killing it instantly. He dismounted and ran towards her, calling out to her. Are you alright, miss? I heard your scream and came as fast as I could. That was a close call. You're lucky I was nearby. She looked at him and felt a surge of relief and gratitude. He was a handsome man with a rugged face and a brown hat. He was her savior. She smiled weakly and said, Thank you, sir. You saved my life. I don't know how to repay you. He smiled back and said, Don't mention it, miss. What's your name? She said, My name is Vicky. I'm a hunter and a trapper. I live in a cabin not far from here. He said, Well, Vicky, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Jim. I'm just passing through on my way to catch up to my family. And I think you're the bravest woman I've ever met. He helped her up and bandaged her wounds. He then helped her mount her horse and escorted her to her cabin. Along the way, they talked and laughed, finding out they had a lot in common. They both loved the outdoors, the adventure, and the freedom. They both had a strong sense of justice and a dislike for the corrupt and the greedy. They both had lost their families to violence and disease. They both had been alone for a long time. They reached her cabin and he helped her inside. He made a fire and brewed some tea. He sat next to her on the couch and held her hand. He looked into her eyes and said, Vicky, I don't know if this is too soon, but I feel a connection with you. I feel like I've known you for a long time. I feel like you're the one I've been looking for. Can I ask you something? She said, Yes, John, you can ask me anything. He said, Promise me you will never lose that spark and passion for life. She said, Of course without that, what's the point? They hugged, feeling happy together. They had found each other. A new friendship in the most unlikely of circumstances and in the midst of danger. It was time for John to leave they said their goodbyes and he mounted his horse waving as he rode into the warm summer evening. The pair stayed in contact over many years, many stories were told and many memories were made.